So I made the joke after episode 6 of season 2 of Bofuri that it felt like Maple Tree assembled their Pokemon team after each of the members had their own pet. But after episode 7, which has finally returned after that couple week break, seriously, if this doesn't give you Pokemon vibes and feeling like the most advanced Pokemon game, I don't know what will. We literally have both Maple and Sally evolve their pets, so Syrup? Honestly, getting more Bulbasaur, Venusaur, whatever evolution in that trio, right? The fact remains that it kind of looks like what if Bulbasaur was more turtle-ish, and seriously, I love just the way these characters accidentally discover things, and it just feels like, man, if we could play a game like this, I don't think there'd be a single mad person on Earth because we'd all just be having a grin on our face of going through New World Online enjoying the thrill that this game has to offer. And it was an absolutely incredible return. Now, I do have a full live reaction available on my Patreon, so if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts, head on over there and consider supporting. Always a great time. You always just, you start an episode and it's over in a blink of an eye, right? And I like the fact that this episode, it's so simple. It's simply just Maple and Sally accidentally discovering a quest slash kind of investigating and by the end of it it basically is summed down to well they've had their pets for so long that the conditions were different because everyone else who goes to this location they can't find the giant bird they fought or the event doesn't trigger right the fact that there's so many secrets so many little aspects about this game that feel so well thought out Yes, I mean, the game developers are always pulling their heads because they feel like, oh, we made a bug or we made her too powerful. But from a standpoint of playing a game like this, it's so fun because everything I love about video games, I can see here. The fact that you're just constantly finding new ways to enjoy it. Even if you logged into the New World Online and the game just wouldn't let you do a new mission, right? And you just, all you could do was interact with the world because everything else was broken. That would still be more fun than 90% of video games being made. This comes from someone who enjoys a lot of video games being made today. But the fact that you have that realism, that sensation, you can eat things and feel like you can taste them. You can literally interact in the most slice of life fashion and just be enthralled by the beauty of this world. There's this one moment where they show the map of the world, right? And it doesn't look like anything special. You have an ice area. You have a volcano area, a sky area, a forest area. Every video game has little worlds like that. But then you actually see what those areas look like in the wider shots and you just are like, okay, this is seriously, like that location alone is enough to be a compelling game world. The fact that you have dozens of those, the little accidental area they discover with the keys, they find three rocks, these three gems, and it teleports them. It's like this abandoned civilization it felt like. It's so ancient. It feels like it's one step away from crumbling, but at the same time, it feels more preserved than anything else in their world. And just... To see the little creatures and just to witness what this world has to offer, you would get lost. You would literally lose your life and time by playing a video game this awesome. And I mean, it's just such a fun show to watch for that alone. I mean, I thought it was hilarious that Maple pretty much finds her people in this episode. So when they go to that ancient area, you just have like the different creatures and they're just I'm like, oh man, are we looking at Totoro here? Like what's going on? But there's this moment where like two of the creatures are like strangling each other and then this other Pokemon looking creature swallows them and spits them back up. It's just adorable chaotic energy and that's kind of how I look at Maple as a character. She is the most adorable cinnamon roll who might be the biggest psychopath violent menace that the world will ever see. Literally, there's two moments in this episode that just really highlight how much of a menace she is, and Sally's faces of just dumbfoundedness is exactly the viewer watching the chaos happen. So initially when they go to the bird, right, the bird's basically looking all proud, almost immediately gets choked to near death and it's bursting of flames, and we're just seeing her turn into Machine God, then have the tentacle, then have like the Hydra Dragon Blast, and she's just smiling, she's having a great time, and Sally's like... Man, I really worry for anyone who goes up against you, and it's like, well, absolutely facts right there. But the moment that really sells it to me is when they go into the sky, and there's like this, like, sky golem that they have to fight. Ultimately, she just, it feels like, what would happen if an 8-year-old had a laser of death and was just swinging it around? That's the best representation of Maple as a character, because she's in the sky swinging it around like she's Indiana Jones with the whip and just is blowing everything apart. Had they not been in the sky and she was doing that, we would have seen the aftermath of just mountains destroyed, the forest bursted aflame, you know, it just would have been absolute chaos. And I love Maple, I think she's amazing, but she is a violent menace, she absolutely is, and it's no wonder the game developers, when realizing, 
Oh man, Syrup just evolved. What type of monster has have we unleashed? I like the, that the evolution wasn't massively different. It was like a flower, like a ribbon, like nothing too drastic. But the fact that evolution is on the table, it makes the concept of them only having one pet more intriguing because now not only can they get that emotional connection, which made sense why they can't abandon and, you know, just have like multitude of them, like a six party team or anything. But the fact that they can evolve, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen because I don't like expect the party to evolve all that quickly. Like they've had theirs for pretty late into season one, right? And even though time does move fast in this anime, all things considered, it makes sense to really flex them have them bond with their pets, and then to see kind of what would happen in the future sort of a deal. But as an episode, it was really charming, really fun. I was a little worried knowing that they did have a couple week break, you know, I was wondering how bad the production might look and slip. And while I definitely think you can nitpick a bit more of this episode than in previous episodes, I still think it's rather consistent and I really enjoyed my time with it. This show literally has a fandom that universally agrees seemingly that as long as you make the game fun and the antics cute, funny, or just badass at times, we're gonna have a grin on our face. We're watching a game where they're not trapped, they're not going to die, and honestly, it's a good thing because Maple's energy beam of death would probably kill so many people if they were to die in the game, die in real life, because she is an absolute menace. It's just fun to have a video game that is directed like they're actually in the video game because of how advanced their VR is, but the fact remains, there's no threat. There's no stakes in the way that, oh, if they die, then it's all over. No, like, it's a video game. And, I mean, we like watching Twitch streamers. We like watching shows where it just feels like we don't have this in our world to this degree, so it's fun watching anime moe blobs slash badass armored characters just traverse this world and just see a group of friends feeling like they're playing a video game. That's why it's always such a blast and why it was disappointing we had to wait a couple weeks because seriously, it is the diabetes of the midweek here and I'm so happy that it's finally back. But hey, those are just my thoughts. I mean, I get it. This show never will be for everyone, but I think honestly, Anyone who enjoyed season one is probably still getting a kick out of season two. Maybe some people would just prefer the binge aspect of the show, which I completely get since season one was such a great binge, but I'm loving it. I always have a grin. As long as they can keep a grin on my face watching Bufuri, I will be a happy camper every single episode. But thoughts, feelings yourself down below. What did you think of the evolution? What did you think of the murder carnage that is the adorable cinnamon roll, Maple? Do let me know down below, drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and of course, as I mentioned, I do have that full live reaction available on my Patreon, and hey, while you're there, you can also get yourself a video shoutout. So today, we have Anime Life 5, Justin Knight, and King Nut Nut. <laughs> Some of your names just kill me. So thank you so much, Till next time, take care, have a good one.